Hello and so welcome everyone, Anfwolf here with more Colat Part 5. Where we last left off, we'd re reached this altar of some kind. And got another uh, unknown message from someone who I'm guessing lives in the area who has been driven pretty insane. Calling out to someone called Anton. The name Anton we also discovered mentioned um, in one of the Doctor's articles. We are now on our way to one of the other grid references, 6247, which is over here. So we're going to travel, there might be a bridge there, cross over. So it's not, not a long distance. Let's get ourselves underway. Yeah. Bridge. Right, left. Oh. Well, maybe we're not going that way then. I wonder if that means that bridge is out as well. I'll find out. Oh, takes us back a little. Does it? Wait. This is. Oh, hello. What a crackling. Oh, maybe we need to use... Yeah, that bridge is out. So in a way, this may have been one of the final altars. Like, one of the final places, because you couldn't get there from here. Huh. Very well, then we will... Fast travel. Even though I hate to use that term. If we went fast travel to here, we could probably still make it over to this one. So yeah, we will... Cross straight over. We need to keep to the right of these five... Uh, pillars, basically. And there's two ways. We want to take the second one. So I'm guessing it's this one here, if it's... Maybe a little bit further. Yeah, this seems right. Is there going to be any orange clouds impeding our progress, though? Is another question.
chosen you. You are remarkable, just like me. But you are losing your mind, my friend. You're slipping slowly into the abyss, and there is no one to give you a hand. And at the bottom, I am the only one waiting for you. I think I may have taken the wrong path. But we will continue on regardless. Storm's getting worse as we travel higher. Whoa. We have come some distance. Oh well, there's a letter somewhere nearby. We can find that we can get our get our bearings. Caution, a psychopath is on the loose. A dangerous criminal has escaped from the Moscow Mental Institute. We have been informed a man is completely insane and delusional. Are we? Whoa! How did we get over here? Oh well, 5130 then, I'm guessing. Oh, it's there. Wow. Oh well, so be it. So I'm guessing this one is the Red Air um, Tower of some kind. 5130 though, we'll probably be able to see it if we look to the left of where we are. Might be able to see it. There. Bell tower or church of some kind. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's likely gonna have been some. Oh, hello, Shadow. I just take the most direct route possible. Smart idea in the world. Okay. Fine, and we'll take the one route where I don't see one directly standing in front of my path. Why? Because it leads us directly to a dead end. Thank you. 
back off a little. Holy hell, these things are determined. I think they're not even really... Well, they are scary. But they're just unrelenting. If I even saw some writing, like a grid reference, I wouldn't even want to have a moment to write it down. There's a note nearby. Can we have a moment, or are you going to try and kill me? Where the hell am I again? Oh. Um, right. There's the bridge. Okay, can I read this journal without you coming across me and killing me? Cross the bridge. Take a big left. Basically, we're going to end up. Over there, I think. This entry is from the testimony of Boris W. A five-year-old boy possibly exposed to the unknown force that caused the death of 12 people at the Vladimir-30 complex. Boris W. I have seen you in my dream. You asked me about the same thing you are asking about right now. The same man was standing behind you. Dr. Grigor Alnowisk. Boris, there is no one standing behind me. No one's here. Boris W. You are you are wrong, Dr. Gregor Alarisk. This man is asking me to tell you that in the orange light the world is more beautiful. And asks you to take a look at the chamber number seven in sec in section twenty two. Dr. Gregor Alarisk. How do you know all this, Boris? Did your father work in our department? Boris W. No, Grigor, you son of a bitch. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen you taking people to God's eye. I've seen their skin burning and their arms being twisted. I've seen the nightmares that are planted into... Seen the nightmares that it planted into their brains. Did you honestly think no one knew about this? Do you think nobody survived? He has shown us. This marks the end of the entry. <clears throat> Two seconds. That. Ah, uh, you may be able to tell my throat. <clears> this <throat> got choked up there. Maybe this guy who was talking to the child Boris's wanted me to be quiet as well. A quick drink. Ah. Oh. Apologies. Whoa. There you go. <sighs> Probably because I've been recording for about three hours now. Doesn't help. 
So we need to get over to that bridge. <clears throat> oh, sorry, just cleaning my throat. You have to go faster. I don't have a lot of time left. You have to hurry. Find the way. Find me, or I'll unleash hell upon you. I'm out of breath. Come on, Sean, give us a break here. Not literally a break. Take a left, didn't we? Oh, there's a tall, there's a tolling. Is it dead end? Damn it, it is. Follow the bell. My dear Vera, I'm spending my time in the Institute on long walks in the park. Only here I can find solace, only in the shadows of the trees. My thoughts are peaceful when I see how the sun brushes the green leaves and the wind covers my face in a gentle, warm blow. The doctors say the worst is behind me. The breakdown was temporary. It's difficult for me to say what triggered this state. I know you'll never forgive me for what I've done. The tragedy that I've contributed to shall never find any justification nor explanation. I can only cover it up with madness. But I am aware that this is a pathetic excuse, and I'm not able to hide behind it. I take full responsibility for what happened, and I am prepared to be punished. The doctors, however, say I will probably not leave the Institute. You must know I would rather rot in prison a hundred times for what I have done to you. I have to confess, I tricked you. I knew you would never, ever want to hear what I have to say to you. That is why I sent my friend with this letter to your sister, and after a lot of persuasion, she agreed to read it to you. To you. I thank her from the bottom of my heart for this. I'm ending this letter. I want to bore you no more. I love you 
and believe that someday, hopefully, I will be able to tell you all this in person. Luckily, my friend Anton is by my side at all times. He was the one that went to your sister. I hope this letter finds you both well and in good health. I wish you all the best. Forever yours, Vitali. Mm. 1961. The human being's mind is a curious... For a very long time, I... Would... I set out the moment I heard about the incident. Hmm. Now it's clearing up. It's 1961, though. There's been a long gap in these log entries. What did... Is Vitaly the... Inspector? I think that he is. But what... Breakdown is he discussing? We... Uh, <clears throat> we haven't discovered enough of the real diary entries to say for sure but 6247 is our final grid reference that we, we've been given there's still many entries I believe articles diary entries from the expedition woman that we've missed at least I believe so so with that in mind we're gonna go on a, a small journey, maybe this bend here and this one here, before we directly travel to what I'm guessing is the red tower there. So from our position we need to travel almost directly south. So barring unforeseen uh, circumstances. Let us do a little bit of exploring. I'm still curious to what the expedition woman said when it happened. Which I think I mentioned in the previous part when we picked up the last entry from her diary. Hello. At night, strange sounds coming from the forest did not let us sleep. It's hard to tell what it was. It sounded to me like someone was calling me, but the rest of the group said it had been some kind of humming. We will ask the locals if we meet them again. In the morning, everyone was a bit scared, but after breakfast, our moods improved. We set off up the river. The snow isn't really that deep, but it's wet and it sticks to the skis, so it's hard to move. We passed a couple of cliffs, and after a couple of meters, the area became more flat. Finally, around 5.30 p.m., we stopped to set up a camp. It is our first night under canvas. We were very tired. We tried to prepare for tomorrow's walk, but hunger was stronger. Then, exhaustion overcame us. We sat around the fireplace and talked, or rather whispered. We were afraid to speak louder because of the surrounding atmosphere, as if this place was sacred or haunted. At last, we took shelter in the tents, Somehow, nobody feels like sleeping. We thought someone was passing by on the trail nearby, so the boys went to check it out, but there was nobody there. Maybe it was some animal. Again, I can hear the sounds from the forest. Calling your name. And that was grid reference. 6133. Let's have that written down. Now, this pathway is circular, which is fine. 
Hopefully we can get back actually onto a beaten path. Oh, this is leading us back to... Yeah, no, okay, this is the wrong way. We were getting chased by the orange cloud previously. Is here. Cool. So we turn directly. Another path. Oh, and there's a note. Take like a moment. Alive corpses in Siberia. Was there a top secret facility where scientists worked on reviving the dead? Several elements would suggest that this is the case. We are in Enia, a town in Siberia. Here there was supposed to be the institute where decades ago the most brilliant minds were to accomplish the impossible. Revive corpses. Nowadays in place of the complex there is only ruins. It is difficult to determine what exactly was there. Till this day we can stumble upon things resembling medical equipment. But it's clear there was no hospital here, as the elder locals recall. One day the military came, marked out an area, set up a construction site, and it took them several years to build it. One building after another. People were happy because there was work, but as soon as they finished the military surrounded the area with barbed wired fences and forbid to even walk in the vicinity. I remember trucks pulling up and soldiers unloading some equipment. Behind there was a large lot where huge delivery vehicles pulled up. People said those were refrigerated trucks. It had been going on like that for more than a dozen years and nothing happened. Two or three years before they closed it down some weird things had occurred. We saw them transporting people to the facility and the whole village heard screaming in the middle of the night as if they were murdering people. One day it just stopped. The trucks left. The military stayed for a while, engineers came, they tore the whole thing to the ground and that was it. What could have been in that facility? When asked about a possible explanation, Dr. Lijev, an eminent historian, says it was not unusual for the previous government to build a facility hidden deep in the corners of Siberia. It does not have to do anything to do with paranormal fairy tale, but merely with classified military activity. Although historical sources remain silent about Inya village and any military facilities or scientists in this area, it totally contradicts the inhabitants' stories. We became aware of, ex of existing documents that could shed light on this case. An extract from a correspondence where the names of the sender and receiver were censored men mentions about a facility in the middle of Siberia where the military sends well-preserved bodies of convicts in refrigerator trucks for further research. Furthermore, the author writes, I do hope you will manage to do something with them because the mountain is becoming impatient and one alive is not enough. So they may have done it accidentally for one one time and now they want to do it again. Hmm. So we can travel almost directly north now. And continue on our journey. Where does that crossing come up? Ok, 
Okay, there's a hard right in the distance. Hello! I forgot to turn off my Skype. And someone disappeared in my bottom right hand corner view. I say half an hour has passed, but I want to actually continue this and maybe get to our final grid reference. Where we may conclude the actual series. I do not know what will occur. But since we're so close, we may as well press on. 58.25 Ah, yes, we did the Gow Hour. Okay. Are we gonna... Oh. Looks like we actually have to go from the bell tower. That's not too bad. Might be able to. No. Again. Or maybe that's maybe that's the bridge actually there. So a way to bypass it. Maybe I just misread the signs. Maybe we can go around the collapsed bridge and I just wasn't paying oh didn't see this turn here. Tent. Ah. Well, all right then. Tell you what, yeah, we'll end this video here. I thought I would say I'd continue, but with that bridge being out, or with it having, um, obviously, rocks and snow have collapsed and blockaded it, we may have to find. We may need to go back to a previous campsite. But, I will see if we can get around it first of all, before we do anything else. So yeah, this of course is Antwolf with Colat. Hope you've all enjoyed the series so far, and I'll see you to continue it in the next video. Until then, bye bye now.